RV's gone wild. All right, RV's gone wild. Remember, the floggings will continue until morale improves. Just got back from Chilliwack, a beautiful birthday weekend camping, and I ran into some RVing with Joe fans. If you ever spot me in the street, come say hi. All right, well, let's just jump right on the first one. This is a weird one. Mo S. sent this in. This is a Stratocraft, which is somewhere between 1971 and 1972. Uh, this was built in Windsor, Ontario. As far as Mo knows, there's only about six of these that were ever built, and he owns one of the last ones. Mo, if you see this, please comment below and give us more information about this. Are those wheels actually retractable in the front, or do they just stay on the ground? It kind of looks like the bumper attaches to the front, and then the back ones just track on the ground. I don't know. I, I would love it if you could explain to me how this is supposed to work. Uh, and then, of course, the bottom, I guess, drops down, so it's sort of like a high-low camper, which I'll be showing in a moment, but has uh, a drop-down versus a pop-up. Um, again, I've never seen this before. I don't know if we'll ever see it again. But, Mo, any other information you have about this, drop it in the comments. Hey, thanks, Stacey Arnold, for sending me these photos they took. I actually covered this. I think it was in number five. I'll put a link right here uh, where I actually went over this, uh, this, this one. But it's always funny, again, the way everyone sees these same RVs all around the country. We've all got our phones. And I just find it great that all these different people find the same RVs and send the pictures to me. So, yeah, this is a great one. If you haven't checked out episode number five, I'll link it right here. Thanks, Stacy. Or is it Kylie? I'm really not sure who sent this. Sometimes people use different email accounts. Okay, Mike sent this in to me. He joked that he guessed the reception was kind of shaky here, but I think we need to dissect this and dive in just a little more. I, in the past, used to have a direct TV satellite for my RV. I remember how important it was that it didn't move around. It looks like somebody went to Harbor Freight and just bought out all the bungee cords on the shelf. And not only do these bungees look like a spider web, but the spider's on acid, but there's this whole other construct that we have to talk about here. And that is not only are there a thousand little bungee cords, we have this weird structure down below, which is a combination of cinder blocks, rocks, and, and pieces of wood. And he even has a battery here, just in case he needs a little more weight. Uh, I don't think he's drawing energy from the battery. It's just another weight. But uh, I just found this to be hilarious. It seemed a little overkill. And this was up in Anchorage, Alaska. And that's why you see those dishes pointing almost straight out. Something I didn't realize until I moved to Canada is the farther north you go, the more these TV satellite dishes have to point almost straight out because they're so far up north and so far over the curb of the globe. Because yes, it is a globe. Flat earthers, please comment below if you disagree. Now, we didn't actually get the name of the person who sent this in, but it's just classic old aluminum style. I don't know whether it's the 50s or the 60s. Um, uh, this trailer just sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Apparently this is in Upper Texas, which I guess is North Texas. And it even comes with a square tire. They tried to take some photos of the inside, but you just couldn't see anything. Harry T, who's like an RV's Gone Wild supervan, sent us in some more information. And what I like here is, uh, and what these pictures point out, is something you just don't see anymore. This is back when Toyota used to make dualies. I don't think Toyota's made dualies for a really long time. But if you look back at these classics, there was a time. Now, is somebody going to prove me wrong and show me how the Tundra has a dually that I just don't know about? I don't think so. And thank you to Joe S. from Lakeland, Florida, for sending this our way. Apparently, this is in Sefner, Florida. We got someone who's tipped the scale just a little bit too much. Clearly, not only is this camper not really fit for this truck, and it's way overweight, but it really scares me how much that overhang is there, how much it's being held on just by a couple of straps so it doesn't go anywhere, and then, of course, how much tilt there is, right? And it's not only that I'm worried for someone like this that their back end is so burdened, right? That they're burning out their back end, uh, that it might be a little unsafe on the road, but it's more the front end. Those front wheels are practically lifting off the ground. And that means they pretty much can't steer this thing if there's a real emergency. And it uh, feels like just a little acceleration might pop a wheelie with this one. You know, you can send me any photos you got out there that have relate to RVs or you think might be funny on the channel, send them my way. It's RVingWithJoe at gmail.com. I can't use everyone's photos. And like some people in the comments were accusing me, no, I don't just choose Fords. Obviously, I don't just choose Fords. I've never chosen one just on whether or not it's a Ford or a GMC. Yeah, I like Fords. But that's not how I choose them. Uh, so, yeah, feel free to send them my way. I've been getting a lot, so there are some I just can't use because I'm just getting so many. But I try to grab as many as I can. This was spotted in Orlando, Florida. It's the Extendo Van from Johnny I. Thanks for sending this in. Where somebody took some little minivan and extended it out. Um, I guess that works. Kenneth W. sent this in to us. 
He built this unit so he can go off into the woods. He built it to be completely self-sufficient. It's completely solar, and it makes its own water from condensation. Somebody's got to send me a link to that product. He gutted this Mountain Star camper and made it his own. And last year, he was able to stay in this truck for a month and never have to leave the woods. The chassis itself is a GMC 2500 HD. Kilo S sent this in to us. This is from Silicon Valley down in California, where, yes, there are a lot of RVers and homeless folks just living on the street. And in this case, apparently this one has its own wood stove. And apparently this poor fellow was seen on the roof harvesting shingles to put into the wood stove. So down on your luck indeed if you're burning your house for heat. But although Mrs. RVing with Joe couldn't be here, she was marveling at this one, talking about how they actually took all this effort to stylize all the windows. However it looks now, somebody clearly put some energy into making this originally look pretty cool and maybe stylized as an old gypsy style RV. Large Marge is back. She sent us another one. This one was spotted in Oregon. And what marveled me about this, and she can only give me so much information, is this whole tilt up. She said it was sheathed in a mattress pad, but I just keep wondering, what would this wedge thing in the middle be? Does anybody have an idea? I mean, is it a stairway to the roof deck? I just don't understand what the purpose of this pop up in the middle would even be. So Marge or anyone else, if you have any ideas, comment below. I want to hear about them. Hey, by the way, we're getting really close to 10,000 subscribers. I know a lot of you who watch aren't subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the time to do it. I'd really appreciate your help. Get me to 10,000. The closer I can get to 10,000, the faster I can, the more of these videos I can do. So please hit the subscribe button. It's right below. It's really easy to do. I'm going to move on to the next one while you look down there and click the subscribe button right now. Thank you. And this was sent to us by Yetzenia C. And there's two things to point out here. One is, I mentioned this earlier, this is a high-low. This specifically is built by Trail Manor. I looked at a model like this many, many years ago when I was still trying to figure out what kind of RV I wanted. The nice thing about these is they go down really low and they have a really low profile, so you're towing them like you're towing a pop-up. Better wind resistance, never have to worry about bumping into anything, and you can just crank it up once you come to a stop. What's really cool about Yetzenia's setup here is they actually tow this with a 2021 Tesla Model Y long long range performance electric car, which explains why you'd want to have that extra wind resistance efficiency with this particular model. They've already gone on a few camping trips, including to Tampa. And yet Zenia, I wish you many more. I love the idea. I know electric isn't for everyone, but I love it when it works out. I'm a big fan of solar power myself, and there's a decent chance my next truck will be a hybrid of some sort. I really like those hybrid F-150s that you can run your RVs off of. Something tells me we're gonna see a lot more hybrid before we see more electric. And just because I can, I thought I'd include some drone pics I took last year when I was out with my truck and my trailer, my Ember, out there in Gooseneck State Park, Utah. Um, I got to have a lot of fun out there with the drone last year. And uh, I just thought I'd share this wild spot in this RV's Gone Wild video. I'll put a link to the full video where I shot this if you wanted to see more about this area of Utah. And fact that I have a Ford leads me to the topic. This episode's RVing with Joe. Gold Star Tip of the Hat Award goes to... I pick me. That's right, me. I'm going to select my Ford as the Ford Pick of the Week Tip of the Hat. I'm going to tip a hat to myself because I just love my truck. I can't tell you how much I love my truck, how much I love my new Ember trailer that I tow with it. It's got all kinds of problems, that trailer, but I love it nonetheless. It's been my favorite trailer of all the ones I've had all of my 20 years. And it's not just this trailer. This F-150 used to tow this older bullet trailer I used to have, which was even bigger and heavier, and I took it even farther. Sometimes you got to practice a little self-love, and this week, the award goes to me. I am your Hey King. But that's going to take us to... Turducken. For those of you who don't know, and everybody knows by now, right? Turducken is when you take a turkey and inside it you cook a duck, and inside the duck you cook a chicken. Tastes great, but it can be a scary way to tow. Let's take a look at some examples. Joseph H., another Joe, sent this in. He thought this might interest us. It's an ingenious way to use a four post car lift to carry a bunch of toys. He just got a quick picture of this. What did have him concerned is this thing's well over 14 feet. A little worried about the height. That's not his problem. And Michael sent us his little modest turducken here where he's got a truck with a jet ski in the back. He's got his trailer and he's got his boat. But what stood out to me more is I bet you this guy gets pulled over a little bit because he's kind of got a funny looking driver here. So I hope this doggy has a license. You got to tell us, Michael, how well does the dog drive or is he just help you backing up? Terry M. sent this to us. She only had a moment to get a picture of this. She saw this behind a cracker barrel in South Carolina. Basically, they chopped up a schoolie where they got that Jeep on the back. This, apparently, this whole thing gets towed as one long rig. Todd R. sent this to us. This is a classic crawler hauler. First, I was wondering, why would he mount the fifth wheel backwards? But then I realized it's going to be fit one more vehicle on the back end of that trailer under the front of the fifth wheel trailer. That's now mounted on that gooseneck. Uh -huh. That's a whole 
whole lot of rig. Tova F spotted this in Bellingham, Washington. Now, I've actually shown this on my channel before, and people have sent me pictures of this. But now that I know it's in Bellingham, that's not too far from my house. Next time I'm RVing south of the border in Washington State, I'm going to be looking all over for this. If I spot it, I'm going to ask them to let me take photos of the inside. Thanks, Tova. Todd C. sent this our way. He's not sure what the truck used to be, but he saw this in Cobb County, Georgia. It's been sitting there for years, and I guess this is a GMZ-style RV chassis on top of a big rig. Tim R. sent this one in. This is their simple turducken setup where they're towing a trailer with a truck, but they also got this big old side-by-side -side mounted on top of the truck. I gotta say, that truck is pretty weighed down, but it looks like it's weighed down from all that freedom that's mounted on top. Mark P. sent this in. He actually built this himself. I've always talked about how if you're handy and you know what you're doing, you might as well just build one yourself if you're looking to build a sliding camper or a really simple trailer. In this case, he did it in two weeks in New Brunswick, Canada. It's real lightweight. It's all cedar. And he even has it paired up with his own version of turducken there. Sort of like a little mini turducken. It makes me wish I was handy because I would definitely have dreams of building my own RV. But I'll tell you, if I built it, it would look horrible. There wouldn't be a right angle on the whole thing. And because of that camping trip, it's such a busy week, folks. That's all I got right now. We're going to have more turducken coming out. I got Mrs. RV with Joe. She's going to join me on the next one, I hope. She's busy herself. And I appreciate everyone hanging around here. Please don't forget to subscribe. Send me your RVs to RVingWithJoe at gmail.com. And now that it's spring, make sure you get busy living.